At UF Gator Hackathon, we have created Butterfly AI. This is a Python Flask app that helps you to identify butterflies. So you can visit the library, the stacks, um, view information about the butterflies. You can see a map of the different butterfly locations based on their species. And this is just populating individually. There's a lot of data in here. So you have an idea of where the butterflies are and where they migrate. Upload feature allows you to upload a picture of a butterfly. For example, this is a common banded all, And it recognizes it as a common banded all, And then displays some information as well. Uh, this also takes you directly to the Vdex page to see the actual page about it. We'll do another example. Uh, Try me like a monarch. Okay. And it recognizes that this is a monarch, a 1.0. We have a camera feature, so we can bring out this in the field. So right now I have it one camera, so it thinks that I'm a banded peacock. I'm going to pull out my phone. So now it's seeing another one. I actually have a picture of a monarch, and it looks like it is finding the monarch. So you can see this is a monarch, and yep, it's recognizing it. In order to gather data, we initially used an available data set that contained many various species of butterflies, which we condensed to only the ones that can be found in Florida. However, we found that there were not many remaining, and so we created another data set using the catalog of butterfly species at the Florida Museum of Natural History, and in doing so, we have accumulated folders of images for over 70 other species of butterfly. And we then went in and removed any irrelevant images or images of species that were not correct. Our model was developed using TensorFlow and Keras in Google Colab. It is a deep learning image classifier for butterflies and moths. For this model, we focused on the initial 100 butterfly data set that we filtered to include only those butterflies that are in Florida or in the Florida Natural History Museum. And the final model has an accuracy of 85.4%. And this right here is the process I went through basically like step by step, like what I uh, did well at, what I failed at and had challenges with. So I'm just gonna just briefly explain a little bit. So first talking about the data collection, as I mentioned, um, had to go through, put all those images in Google Drive, sort through them, make sure that like we only had those butterflies that we would be actually like testing out here. Um, and right here, I'm talking about just the importing into the Google Colab, making sure that the labels were correctly matched with the images, as you can see here. Um, and then pre-processing mostly included just resizing and also um, just a couple of things that Keras had for image classification. Then went through a lot of processes of model training. I only have three parts included here, but the reality is that I had to retrain this model a couple of times to kind of try to get the best um, results. First had issues with just overfitting the model. Um, talked about it a little bit here, tried a couple more different things had a couple more failed attempts. And finally, I got something that was a lot more accurate um, after doing a lot of like data augmentation and some drops. Um, and this is me increasing that uh, same uh, model layers, increasing the approach to be a little higher and getting greater accuracy because of it. Um, but overall, this model can still be improved on. We didn't include all of the data that we had for the data set. Um, and mostly our biggest issue was just because we had so many species, but not enough images in each of those species to make something that was like incredibly accurate. But if I could expand upon this model, have a little more time, I really would make it a lot more accurate and include so many more different species, not only Florida and Florida Natural History Museum butterflies, but those of the entire United States. The map part of the application, I used a data set from GBIF to create each point for each butterfly species. From there, I was able to import it into ArcGIS Online, which allowed me to individually see each and every species and be able to select. So in our app, 
this map is indebted in there and the user can go in and select just specifically one species so they can sort of see the range of where each species is.